Today on HOA HAM, let's talk shack power. How many amps of power do we actually need in the shack? How do we convert that over to DC power, which is what our HAM gear needs? How do we distribute that power throughout the shack? And then a bonus feature, how to take some equipment that perhaps you already own for POTA, and if you don't and you ever want to go portable, you'll be buying one of these, how can we use it in the shack in an emergency situation? Let's acknowledge before we open up all this gear that there are some differences. I don't know what a boot in a car is or what aluminum is. I've touched and used and worked with many blocks of aluminum. I have a trunk in my car. I'm just jokingly pointing out that there are differences in words that we use and there are certainly differences in electrical systems from geographical region to region. For my friends outside of the United States, my principles will apply at a high level, but obviously you have to take this and figure out your specific use case and the electrical requirements of your region. Even in the United States of America, this is not going to be a step one, step two, step three process across the board. It will be sharing with you general principles and specific pieces of gear that you will then have to apply to your use case in your QTH with your electrical system, how many amps you have coming into your home, how many outlets available, etc. Let's start by talking to new hams who are trying to figure out what room in your QTH will be good for your shack. Is there enough power in this room in my home for my shack equipment? This is a video of my prior shack in a spare bedroom of our home. This home is 30 plus years old. The XYL and I gutted this house four and a half years ago and did a complete rebuild. The only electrical upgrade we made to this bedroom was new outlets. Everything was done under a building permit and inspected to code. And that electrical system, which was designed and installed 30 plus years ago, a 15 amp circuit, handled all the appliances in my room, large screen, TV, desk lamps, all the things you would expect in a modern day home and my shack. In that cabinet on the bottom side is a full desktop computer as well as my MFJ power supply on the top side of that computer on a shelf. Next to it is my LDG tuner being powered. You can see my 991A is being powered as well as my meter. And here we have a hotspot being powered. Two monitors are being powered as well as three lights going across the top of the room used for YouTube lighting. I'm just simply trying to say, if you're trying to add a shack to your existing home, if you're running a 100 watt rig, there is no reason on planet earth why a home built in the last 20, 30 years, 40 years should not be able to handle this on a 15 amp circuit in a common room in your house. Unless you've done something odd, unless it was undersized to code to begin with, or you're using some really powerful equipment in there, power consuming equipment, no problem. Add a shack to your existing home should be okay. High level, no problem. Let's say you're planning for a new shack and your home is under construction. I would get together with your general contractor, tell them where you want to put that shack and ask the electrician to go ahead and run some extra circuits there. Plan for more power than you intend to consume at this point in time so you're never caught without enough. If you live in an existing home, it's already completed, perhaps you have access to the walls like I did in my case. Now, I have an unfair advantage. I am a registered handyman service here in the Tampa Bay area in Florida, and I have all of my own tools. I've been in construction on the side for my entire adult life. My dad was a general contractor. I've grown up with tools in my hands. On the other side of that wall is my garage, and I opened up the back of that wall so that our electrician could run new circuits for us. What did I run? Well, you can see two outlets here that are 110. Those are on one 20 amp circuit. There's hardly anything I could throw at that today that would come anywhere close to consuming those electrical capacities. And I can't think of anything future I could throw at those that would consume those electrical capacities. I also included, you could see a blank in both of those. There is a separate 20 amp 220 circuit run for a future amplifier. So when one of those manufacturers out there wants to send an awesome amplifier to HOA to put on display and show other people how great an amplifier can be, I am ready for that to happen. The electrical is there and run. I just didn't put the outlet in yet. So that's planning ahead. If you're a new ham, give yourself some time. Don't jump the gun on this. Don't open up a wall and have your electrician 
be running circuits when you don't really know what you need. Spend some time using the equipment you have, planning for your future, and then if you choose to make some changes, be sure those are changes you won't have to make again for a long time. Or if you're in an existing facility, an existing home, and you have access to a wall, in one of the later episodes, I'm gonna show you how to create access over and over and over that doesn't require cutting out drywall and spackling every time. You're a new ham, you've picked out your rig, you've put it on order, you've decided where you're gonna operate in the QTH. The box arrives, you unpackage it, and you realize they forgot to send you the power cord to plug into your 110 wall outlet. And then all of a sudden you ask a silly question or what seems to be a silly question to experienced hams. It's not a silly question. These things run off of DC. Our ham gear runs off of DC, not AC. So we have these power supplies that convert AC over to DC. Here at the Hughes Shack, I have used the MFJ4230 MVP from day one, both at my original shack, in the configuration that I've already shown you, and in the new shack. This is more than sufficient to power everything that I use, and there are still other devices that I haven't even mentioned. When I use my SDR radio along with my ham gear, I am powering an SDR radio as well as a relay that turns off the transmission signal to that SDR radio so I don't damage it during transition. So I've even forgotten about all the gear that this powers for me. It's more than sufficient in the shack the way it is today. When someone sends me an amplifier, I'm going to need to get a separate power supply for that for the 220. I'll do a full review on this MFJ4230 MVP, but let me tell you why I specifically chose this one. Size, amperage, wattage that it provides, and all of the number of ports that it makes available for me to distribute power. Let's pull it out of the box and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So here is the power supply. And did I mention its size? It's tiny, and that worked great in my original shack because I had limited space. I have four times the space in my new shack, but I still use this power supply because it delivers everything that I need. Of course, it comes with the cord that we all expect to plug into our 110 AC, and then it converts this over to DC. Let's look at the front panel. We have an on-off switch. We have a meter that will go back and forth between volts and amps. And ham radio gear predominantly likes 13.8. So this knob here will adjust the volt output, but 13.8 is typically what we expect to see. We have these uh, connectors here on the front of the radio. If after you install this in a tight place and you use and take advantage of the power poles in the back and you still need to get some power, maybe for some special testing, a temporary project, you have the ability to get power here from the front. These are screw on terminals. So you have a couple of different ways to access, whether it be via banana plug or some type of spade connector here. So that's a great feature of this particular MFJ power supply. After you install it, if you don't get access to the back, you still have access to power in the front for specific situations. Here's where we're plugging in the cord for our outlets. Here is a selectable switch to go from 110 to 220. So this is an international unit, so to speak. And then we have two sets of power poles in the back. So that's as simple as you can get with a power supply that provides sufficient power to do a great deal of operating in the shack with a variety of equipment, yet a compact size. On top of that, it comes with the MFJ warranty. So here's a great power supply. It's what I've used from day one. And when I rebuilt the shack, there was never even a consideration what I changed to something different. Now, how do we distribute power from this power supply? Well, I start with power in the back and I run into one of these uh, two pairs of our power poles and I take that to a distribution block. Here's a photo of the back left hand corner of my shack. Underneath my Skybridge hotspot is an MFJ relay that protects my SDR play, SDR receive only radio. And then below that is my power pole distribution block. It's a fused distribution block and I would always recommend using a fused distribution block. And you match your equipment to the amperage of the fuse. That way you're always protecting your equipment appropriately. 
On the workbench in front of us are two power distribution strips by MFJ. The first one is more basic, but absolutely adequate, and it too is protected by individual fuses, 30 amps in, 25 amps out, 10 and five out. So you can use this with a adequate shack. My original shack, well, there weren't enough power poles here to power all the equipment that I was powering. There was enough power coming in, but not enough uh, distribution going out. You could take this uh, backyard portable, you could use this Poda soda. Um, this would be power distribution on the go or for an appropriately sized shack. Thinking about future expansion, I would make the investment right up front and get something that's a bit larger and has enough power pole uh, distribution ports for you to have ultimate flexibility longer down the road. This one in particular is switched. It has a meter, it comes with its own power cord that you would then attach directly to your power supply. It's 40 amps in, and then we have multiple amps out to go to all the type of gear that you would be operating in your shack. So my suggestion is put this somewhere convenient in your shack that as you plug in your equipment, if you need to remove a piece of equipment, you can easily get to your power pole and remove the electrical connection. Or if you're like me and you're always tinkering, you want this in a place in the shack that you have access to it. Now you can screw these onto your wall to the bottom side of your workstation. I use Velcro for everything. And everything that you saw in that picture on the back left-hand corner of my shack is there with very aggressive Velcro, double-sided Velcro, Velcro to the wall, Velcro to the back of the equipment. And I can remove it as I need to or as I change things out. This is how we distribute power, a block that has multiple ports for power pole connectors. One more thing to talk about before we get to that bonus feature that I was talking about earlier. So this is for the new hams that still don't quite understand the concept here. Let me take you step by step. So you've purchased a power supply here in the States. It's more than likely going to be a 110 or it's going to come default to 110 because that's how power is here in the USA. You get a power cord with it. You're going to plug that in the back of your power supply. You're going to take that to your 110 wall outlet that covers the 110 AC part of this equation. Now you're going to connect your power supply to your distribution block, and we're going to go into the input of the distribution block. We're going to use a piece of cable that has power pole connectors on it already. There are plenty of videos out there on how to make power pole connectors. I'll leave a link in the description below how to pick some of these up on Amazon already made, but quite frankly, over time, you need to learn how to make your own power poles because it's just less expensive to do so, and then you always have the option to do it, and you have a new skill set. It doesn't matter which of these two you plug into on this power supply, red to red, black to black, and then you're going to take this and you're going to plug it to the input side of our distribution block. Same thing, red to red, black to black. If power poles are new to you, these are commonly what is used in ham radio. So now we have our power supply plugged into our 110 wall outlet. We have power coming from our power supply into our distribution block. Now there are three other distribution blocks that have power that we can take to the next step. We need to now get power to our radio. So you're going to have a power cord that came with your radio. It likely came with a bare wire end and you have to add a power pole to it. Again, lots of videos out there. Go ahead and plug that into your distribution block, red to red, black to black, and then plug the power cord into your radio. And now what we have is a complete electrical setup in the shack. Power supply is powered by our 110 wall outlet. It takes power into the distribution block. The distribution block then takes power into our radio equipment. Why yes, yes I do have quite the collection of bio -eno batteries. Thanks for noticing, this isn't all of them. Anytime a new battery hits the market and people want to compare it, they compare it to bio -eno. It's considered the standard. So when it comes to emergency operations for me, all that I rely on is bio -eno. While these were purchased for portable and emergency operations outside of the QTH, realize that what you have here is a backup source for inside the QTH. If a storm comes through and takes your 110 power offline, what would you do here? Well, good grief, we've got a power pole connector, we've got a power pole cord, we've got a distribution block in the corner. 
why wouldn't we take advantage of that? And that's the bonus feature. Stop looking at this just as portable ops. If you lose power in your home and you need your radio gear powered up for a brief period of time, one of these batteries can do that. If I'm gonna run 100 watts, not this one, I wouldn't even rely on this one, but any of these two, the 1220 or the 1230 amp hour would certainly be sufficient to run my shack for a period of time. I'm going to uh, change the angle of my camera here and I'm going to take you in the back corner of my shack. You can't see it yet, you will in a minute, but behind the watt meter, power meter, SWR meter, and the 991A is my distribution block. So let's get back there and plug in one of these batteries. We'll turn on the radio and I'll show you what I mean about emergency operations. First up, we'll unplug the MFJ4230 MVP power supply, and then we'll plug a short patch cord with power poles into the import on that distribution block. I'm not going to edit this video for it to be smooth and professional. I'm going to show you, you know, the entire part of the video, warts and all. I don't want to cut anything out because I don't want you to think there's any trickery here. And then we're going to plug directly into that BioNO 12 volt 30 amp hour battery. You're going to see my MFJ relay in the back corner light up, the little green light lit up because it's not on a switch. So as soon as it gets power, it lights up. We'll power up the FT991A. You'll hear some people talking just to confirm that, you know, it's operating off of my battery. I'm going to find an open frequency. You'll hear my tuner kick in for just a moment. It's on my NFED antenna. That is my normal antenna. So it has a memory of tuning it. So it's going to be a very short tune. You may not even hear the click. Let's see if you hear it here in a second. Yeah. That's how quick the tune was. KD4 BMG testing, testing. KD4 BMG testing, no response required. There you go, friend. That's how we power up our shack. Hope you found this helpful, whether you are a new ham or an experienced one. Talk to you soon, 73.